And thank you to each of the witnesses for being here and testifying on this, this very important topic. Um, Mr. McKinnon, uh, an article last month in the New York Times uh, detailed how YouTube's recommendation algorithm can lead users from adult pornography to videos of girls as young as five or six years old uh, wearing bathing suits. Uh, do you know, know if YouTube has changed their algorithms uh, regarding child exploitation? And if not, what can and should YouTube do to stop this? Senator Cruz, thank you um, on a very important topic. Um, I am not aware that YouTube has changed their algorithm. I'm guessing if they would have done that, that, that would have been newsworthy, and, and parents everywhere would have been celebrating that, but I have not been aware of that news. Um, I, I believe that YouTube, in their vast knowledge, has the ability to, in the same way that they can recommend videos, they can choose not to recommend videos. And that would simply be a change that they would have to choose to make. Uh, Wired reported that sexual predators use the comments section of YouTube videos uh, to help other predators find videos. Uh, for example, they would announce times and videos that would be of particular interest to sexual predators. Uh, YouTube, uh, thankfully, disabled commenting on, on many of the videos of children under 13. Um, has this prevented sexual predators from using YouTube to spread this information, or is, or is it simply moving the problem elsewhere? I I believe it's a step in the right direction. I'm, I'm happy that they've made this change. I believe that that should mitigate some of the activity, but based on our experience, these individuals are extremely creative. And the comment section, irrespective of platform, whether it's YouTube or Instagram and other platforms that allow comments, are all breeding grounds for this sort of networking of pedophiles. So if it's not going to be on YouTube, it'll simply move to another platform, and we've been witness to that. Uh, as you know, a little over a year ago, uh, we passed and the president signed into law the, the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, uh, which amended Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act to strip immunity from online platforms that knowingly assist, facilitate, uh, or support sex trafficking. Um, how successful has SESTA been in, in combating sex trafficking, and, and, and what else does Congress need to do? And that's open to anyone who... Senator, good question. I think uh, SESTA largely has helped uh, uh, take down, I think of uh, Backpage.com, for example, uh, certain ads that were attracted to uh, the networks, as Mr. McKenna said, it, it shared a, a likeness for trying to recruit and find and entice young women, uh, kids, into uh, sex for sale. Uh, but I would also say that uh, it seems like when, uh, when one disappears, uh, another one appears. Uh, that's uh, a global issue, as we've been saying, across the, uh, the country, United States, plus the world now, we're seeing still an increase on those number of uh, uh, chat sites, uh, video sites, opportunities for uh, exploitation to continue in a digital world. <clears throat> Last year, a, a Texas woman uh, sued Facebook for providing human traffickers with a way to, quote, stalk, exploit, recruit, groom, and extort children uh, into the sex trade. Uh, in in y'all's judgment, are Facebook and the other social media sites doing enough uh, to combat uh, exploitation of their platforms by, by sex traffickers? <laughs> uh, Senator, once again, I'd, I'd say there's uh, room for improvement here. Uh, I think a lot, uh, what we've seen with the cooperation of the tech companies on the plus side, uh, being uh, participative in things that we're doing like cyber tip roundtables, bringing the tech companies together so that we can have a collaborative approach. Uh, if there's ever been a cause for uh, what I'd call a true public-private partnership, uh, this is it. But uh, of all the tech companies that uh, handle reporting to NCMEC, uh, about 1,500 of them, <clears throat> I uh, uh, would 
be, uh, I, I think, uh, suffice to say that many of them uh, still can do more. Uh, Senator Cruz, thank you. What, what I was trying to formulate in my, in my head to say was that um, not, it, not enough is, is being done. And in our experience, it doesn't feel as though until there's a huge news report or there's some pressure, there's always this reactive response to these sort of issues from these large companies. They are brilliant organizations. I am confident that they have in their know-how the ability to, within weeks, take care of many of the problems that we have spoken about here at this hearing. But it's not until they're pushed or there's pressure or there's reputational damage or something that they seem to move. And even then, in the case of YouTube, they're still unwilling to do some very simple things that we think would protect children. And so that's my greatest concern, is that there's this continual resistance and reactive approach to the problems that to us feel so obvious. Well, and I, and I would certainly be interested, I know the committee would, in, in any of the witnesses' recommendations for additional steps that, that need to be taken, because this, this has to be continually addressed and vigorously addressed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.